Welcome to another episode of The Color of Music. Today, we're excited to delve into the rich, vibrant world of music therapy. We're recording our podcast today from the beautiful auditorium of the Nelson Center of Musical Arts in sunny Nelson, New Zealand. Today, we had the pleasure of speaking with Colette Jansen, who is only not only a registered music therapist, but also an accomplished jazz musician, a pop singer with a background in commercial and public radio. She's worked in jazz programs, collaborated with renowned musicians, and continues to bring the healing power of music to her clients. Let's explore this intersection of music therapy performance and Colette's journey as a musician. Welcome, Colette. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, Todd. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. I should say, I should start with a music therapy um, ethos, if you like. Hello, and you come back to me. Hello, hello, hello to you. Hello to you. <laughs> hello to me. Hello to me. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Beautiful to you. Okay. <laughs> Colette, you're a music therapist. Can you tell us what is a music therapist and what does a music therapist do? <laughs> right. And very, yes, very, very good questions. What is a music therapist? A music therapist is someone who uses music in a planned way, in a planned situation um, to help people whether they're um, neurotypical, as in just your average Joe Blow, or neuro neurodiverse, um, which is um, people who might have other uh, challenges health-wise in their life, um, whether they've got emotional um, problems or whether they're seemingly going through life um, quite happily. So a music therapist looks at that person um, gets some information about them and then looks at how music can help wherever they're, wherever they're at. Um, so whether they're moving house and they're completely stressed or um, whether they've just had someone pass away and they're grieving, um, yeah, so that's, that's what we do. And what was the second part of that question? Oh yeah, what does a music therapist do? Right, well we lug a lot of gear, yeah. as you can see. I can see, we're well set up here. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're really good at um, um, packing in and packing out of venues. Um, uh, and we also uh, have a code of ethics. Registered music therapists have a code of ethics that they work to. We are an allied health profession, so we align ourselves with um, your physiotherapists, your other health professionals, um, speech language therapists, um, all those kind of people. We are in that same kind, of, that same group. Um, so we have ethics and standards to uphold. We've got a, an annual registration that we go through. Um, so we've got continuing professional development that we need to have signed off. We have regular supervisions with a supervisor who is keeping track of what we do, how we're doing it, if we've got any hurdles um, or roadblocks as they might be seen in um, whatever corporate language you're using. Um, and, and they will help guide us through that. So that's that's another thing. Um, so yeah, we're always looking at how can we help people and how can music help. And while I was studying, I um, to help me remember that, I came up with a little ditty. And the little ditty was, um, identify a need, how can music help? Set a goal and how to achieve it, outcome and result. And that really helped me just solidify what it is that I was looking at doing with my clients or with my groups. Wow, that's kind of like out of um, Sesame Street. It, yeah, it could. Be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's a little, yeah. it's a little dirty. And because of my background in um, commercial radio, where I was writing jingles, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of come up with these little ditties to yeah. um, to help me. Yeah. It's also easy to remember things. Mm. <clears throat> Now, everybody wants to know, how, can you share with us uh, how your journey into music therapy began? Yeah, how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> we got all the time. <laughs> um, I was, yeah, thinking about this. Um, it really started back in about 1993 um, when I got ooze, um, RSI in my wrists, and I was going through a really emotional um, stage myself um, with that and with the fact that I couldn't 
work and it was painful and I was living in splints 24 7 um, and I met someone who helped me through um, that with various techniques uh, and then I used music because I was gigging at that stage as well. Um, I used music to help me and I used to listen a lot to um, my favourite jazz singer at the time. Um, and then, as chance would have, the jazz course opened up at um, Christchurch Polytechnic, um, as it was at that stage. Um, it's now ARA. And um, I auditioned and got in and... Um, Music for me then became a form of self-expression. It helped me work through um, a lot of the ins and outs of um, the pain. Um, my father died at the same time as I started that course and so it helped me through that grieving process. Um, then uh, 2002 I was working on, I had my own live radio show on commercial radio in Christchurch and I interviewed a lady by the name of Daphne Rickson and Daphne um, was talking about music therapy. And so that was kind of, I'd had my personal journey of using music, and then here was Daphne talking to me about music therapy and the fact that they were opening the course at uh, Victoria University in Wellington. And I was intrigued, but I wasn't in a situation where I could drop tools and go and be part of that course and, and undertake that course at that stage. Um, long story short, it took me till 2018 to actually um, start the course, and that's another journey in itself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. Uh, music has such a wide range of therapeutic benefits, as you've started to explain. You've mm. been, you, were, you got into it from that yep. uh, position. Uh, I'd love to delve into some specific applications uh, and how they meet uh, various needs. Mm. However, first of all, can you give me a broad overview of how music can be beneficial for someone's well-being and how it's used in a therapeutic setting. Yeah, um, I, for me, there's this, this kind of like, no matter what someone presents to me, how they present to me, I, I don't necessarily have, uh, oh, you're coming to me with this situation, um, or this or, th or other situations and therefore I'm going to use um, different scenarios. I, 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 look at, I look at someone, I listen to them, um, whether they're talking or not, I, I look at their body language um, and I try and engage them and from there it's building up the rapport. So finding things in common finding a way of intriguing them. Like when I came in here today, your, your eyes lit up with the instruments and the, and the color that I've brought in with me. And that's exactly what happens when I'm working with a client. I give them a chance to play. I give them a chance to just explore. Um, for instance, some bells. Now I might use the bells with, um, in fact, I do. I use these with my um, groups in aged care, um, along with a little um, shaker owl and um, the tambourines, um, because they're they're light instruments that uh, both children and aged people can handle um, with with and not be too heavy. Uh, I do have at home. I have full-on proper musical instruments um, for people who can handle the bigger instruments but it's it's letting people explore and and trying to have the instrument that might be suitable for them i don't know whether that answers your question oh, yes, or not yeah. but i can see your eyes lighting up and yeah, yeah. by by all means todd if you want to um try an instrument like this one here the sansula is just beautiful And yeah. this goes back to Africa. It does. Yes. It does. And that's actually a German-made um, <laughs> sensula, um, with the precision that, 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 that they have. Um, that instrument there, for me, I was introduced while I was studying, and I just fell in love with it because of where I was at. 
uh, at that stage in the course and just absolutely fell in love and it loved with it and that was my treat to myself when I finished and when I graduated I said right I'm going to buy a Sansula. <laughs> I so, think there's probably the harmonics in this resonate with our soul. <laughs> they, they do, that's exactly yeah. right, yeah. And the other thing that can happen with this one, yeah. you get that. Yeah. And you can make it really sing and yeah, just, just touches you. So in answer to your questions, I, I don't know that I've got a specific way of dealing with each, each scenario that you might have in front of you to ask me about what, what, a, what music therapy is about. It's about building relationships. It's about letting that person gently open and explore. And um, as I say down, down here, you know, uh, it, what does music sound like? It, what does what does anger sound like? You know, you might grab a my rolled up sticks here, <laughs> and you know, you might go like this, and that might help someone get out the emotion of someone's just passed and they weren't ready for them to pass. Um, so it, it's getting that out. It's a cathartic feeling, or um, they might just want to explore the rhythms and so therefore they can explore rhythms um yeah you, you're giving them the chance to play and be and not necessarily even know what they're looking for um sometimes an emotion you can't put the words on it and and music gives you that that in whether it's got the lyrics on it or whether it's just instrumental um it gives you that in to hang on a minute, I don't know why that piece of music's touching me, but it is, and I'm going to listen to it once, and it might make me cry, and I'm going to listen to it again, and it might give me shivers up my skin, and it, I'm going to listen to it again, and that might be as much as I need, um, and then I can move on to another piece of music. So it's helping, it's giving people that support. It's what we call holding in music therapy and you'd never know in a situation what is going to come out because we're all individuals so um, I might I might start like this for instance if we were having a session ourselves I might start like this and I'll see which instrument takes your fancy or it takes your eye and you might pull out a boom whacker and go how can I play the boom whacker yeah what is <laughs> what is a boom whacker yeah. <laughs> these these are great these um, are absolutely fabulous. They, they're in the key of C, well the set is, and, and then they come up the scale. You know, um, and it's, it's a matter of, I could, um, and I have done with some clients, all we do is put them in order. We put them in the scale order and we sound them as we're putting them in the scale order. And then we might play, you know, Mary Had a Little Lamb or another little nursery rhyme or something. Um, something that's not too taxing, but that gives, touches in here, touches in the soul and the heart. Yeah, so it, it you know, I mean, yeah. Well, I, I use it a lot for relaxation and, uh, yep. and some people use it for uh, sleep or breathing um, in, in situations like that. Too. Yep, yep, absolutely. Breathing's really good. Um, a lot of the time if we're stressed, we're holding our breath. So um, breathing helps you ground. It gets you into your, um, it, it's working with your nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system and your um, uh, calming you down, um, working on the amygdala and the fight yeah. and flight um, scenario. Um, so what music does is it, it activates all parts of the brain. So it's really, really good for people with um, who've been diagnosed with all sorts of conditions, um, no matter what they are, it, it activates. Like I've been using it myself for um, my concussion that I've been going through for the last 10, close to 10 months. So um, people said to me, oh, why don't you take the time off? And I'm saying no, because I believe that music's helping my brain heal. Um, so I just need to pace myself through 
what it is and how I use it. And I make sure that um, during a session, I'm not overdoing it for myself or for my people I'm working with. Uh, and then I have a break in between that and going to my next session, so yeah. Do you ever do this in a hospital setting? I During my study, I did do it yeah. in a hospital. Um, I worked in a pediatric ward and it was just beautiful to see the response. Yeah. Um, I remember one one child, I, I, I can't give specifics because of the, the um, confidentiality that I have with those clients, but um, a quick synopsis would be that they didn't want to get out of bed. Uh, and with the use of music, I managed to uh, get, her, get her out of bed and we were walking up and down the hallway and the doctors and the nurses were all absolutely smiling and you could see their quiet little applauses. <laughs> um, so, and that was the child being encouraged and the use of music to, to, to get them moving. Are you working with children now? I am, yes. yes I've just started working with um, a group. Um, we're calling them the jitterbugs, the little yeah. jitterbugs. So yeah. I've written a little song, I'm a little jitterbug. <laughs> I'm a little jitterbug, which I must record, but um, yeah. And it's lots of fun. Uh, so, and they're newborns to toddlers. Um, I would yeah. think that they would be a lot more receptive because they have less... Um, filling their brain up they're very open to whatever's going on in the world <laughs> a little bit a little yeah. bit but they're also intrigued yeah they also sit there and watch me because there's still there's that rapport is still happening it's still uh, in the early stages so um we're getting to know each other yeah 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 i was also uh, curious about the cognitive benefits and how music can support learning memory focus and concentration for example, what can you can you tell us more about that? Um, well, for instance, the little the little ditty yeah, that I was yeah. talking about before, I use that to help me remember the process of um, you know what's my goal, Where, um, how do I how do I start this, what am I looking for? Um, yeah, so so I use it in that regard um, to make a little ditty up. Yeah, and. Uh, what do you know about the physical benefits, uh, how music can support, uh, uh, for example, I have read that music used for pain management, uh, and, and I think you probably used it for a little bit of that. If so, how does it work? Um, the ins and outs of it, you'd need to go and look at a scholarly article, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and I completely yeah. um, um, support you know, just put in Google Scholar and music supporting um, um, pain, and yeah. it'll come up with all sorts of um, research documents that you can you can look at. Um, for 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 me, um, what I've noticed with people in pain is that it, it's used as a distraction, uh, and it, because it's used as a, as a distraction, and people start to have fun and they start to relax, therefore um, their focus on the pain goes. Um, or, 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 you know, is, is lessened. Uh, and it might, it might be that half an hour later they become aware of that pain again. But at, at the time where the music is being used and uh, actively engaged in, that uh, is when the pain can uh, dissipate. Mm. So... Could you, aid your, uh, could you share some of your insights and how music aids in improving motor skills, uh, especially in a rehabilitation setting? And you've, you've touched on that, some of that already. So. Yeah, yeah. So um, people with strokes, um, if they're having trouble walking, it can be used in regards to um, helping them with the beat, with the rhythm, to, to start to walk in time again. Um, um, so it's used for, for improving gait. Uh, it's used for improving speech as well. If someone's having difficulty with their speech post-stroke, um, if they, they can't get the words out, often they can sing the words. They're, again, there is research online um, or, and, and um, documented proof of people who have, who have um, started singing sentences to um, make themselves understood. Yeah, and it's brilliant. It's really, 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 really heartwarming to see that. And speech language therapists do have a certain um, system that they use 
it, so this so the music therapy and the speech language therapy work side by side um, and collaboratively. And in fact, we, we can work collaboratively collaboratively with um, physiotherapists as well. Um, anyone in, in those health settings to use music as an extra um, on top of what they're doing with their other therapists. Because when you're singing, it doesn't necessarily feel like you're, you're practicing or you're um, doing your exercises. Yeah. But in actual fact, you are because you're breathing, you're, you're singing longer phrases, you're, um, you've got the rhythm in your, in your body. And um, yeah, so motor movements as well for um, children with um, fine motor skill um, challenges. Um, they can get their fingers on the, um, on the keyboard, um, like I've got a little keyboard down there. So um, that's, that's the one I take along and I use with the um, children and use with adults as well, um, just to get them their fingers on a musical instrument that's, they can turn the button on and Oh, there it is, there's a sound. Um, some children I use the guitar with, um, just getting them to, while well, I play the chord, they do the strumming, and that's good for their motor movement as well. Um, the, bigger, the bigger gross body movement movements, I use the scarves, uh, and we do the sensory, and we dance around with the scarves, and, and that gets the people feeling their bodies, moving their bodies, interacting with others, um, with the dancing. So yeah, it's anything, anything, anything. <laughs> well, I've seen you at NCMA, you, you hold a, um, a session or sessions here. Yeah. Uh, and look like a group of people in all various ages. Yeah. Um, but some look like they're um, are seniors. Uh, is it being used a lot for <laughs> Helping them. Absolutely, absolutely. And that, so that's Nell's song. That's, yeah. um, uh, it, it's based on a neurological choir. Um, we call ourselves Nell Song Wellness Singers. Um, and um, it works on breathing. It works on um, songs that encourage the use of the tongue, um, the use of really opening the face up and using the facial movements. Um, I've got people in there with um, various diagnoses uh, and it is targeted towards people with neurological conditions, um, be that stroke, Parkinson's, um, uh, TBIs, so, um, brain trauma, um, like I'm having, <laughs> yeah. um, but um, anything, anxiety, stress, sometimes that they, those things also come alongside another diagnosis. So um, it, what we end up having in Nelsong is a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of laughter. People can choose the songs that we, we play. Yeah. I'll also go along and if I'm hearing a song um, on the radio, I'll um, go, oh, yeah, that would work because it's using lots of vowel sounds, um, which are really good for um, opening the voice up. So, um, yeah, and I'll give, because I'm a singing teacher as well, and um, I, was, I was doing that, so I'm aware of um, how to go about getting the voice in the right place so that you're not straining the voice um, and using other techniques, so, yeah. So you're holding these classes at, uh, every week? Or? Yep, so those classes are happening on a, during school term. Um, mm. They happen here at NCMA uh, on a Wednesday morning between 10 and 11. And then quite often the a group of them will toddle off and down to a local cafe and, and uh, have some social time together, which is really good because that's part of the neurological choir or the wellness singers um, ethos is to build community it's to get people out of isolation as well because isolation is an absolute killer and um, it's really important that people are connecting with someone else even if it's only one person but even if they can connect with one person that will grow out into um, networking out with others and it's um, really really beneficial what's really caught me is that some I've seen some programs on uh um, seniors that are in dementia can hardly carry on much of a conversation, but you ask them about a song that they know, and they know all the words, and oh, they yes. can sing it. Oh, know? yes, so. yes. And I, I, so my, my thesis year was in aged care, so that's, that, um, that's, 
a lot of where I work now um, is in uh, some rest homes and various settings within those rest homes. Um, dementia care, it, it's wonderful to see them, their eyes, you know, the yeah. eyes lighting up and the yeah. toes tapping and, and the recognition of a song or they'll start singing a song and I'll start, if, even if I haven't got it in my repertoire, I'll start just singing along without the guitar. And, and um, it, that's, that in itself is an acknowledgement of the person. They're, they're being heard yeah. uh, and their, their voice is being heard and whatever it is that they're trying to remember or, or say by singing that song, um, I, I acknowledge that by uh, what we call mirroring mirroring what they're doing. Mm. Wow. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> uh, why do you think uh, music is so powerful and why does this strong connection between humans and music come from? <laughs> <laughs> Ask the gods. Wasn't it David yeah. that played the harp to, you know, I mean, yeah. whatever your religious belief is. <laughs> yeah. uh, or maybe it's none, but um, I, I don't know. Music is everywhere. Music is in nature. It, it, it's, an, it's innate. You know, our heartbeat is... Uh, in us and, and so we are already a rhythmic musical person um, as soon as we've got that beating heart and there was one of the songs that we learned during study was um, um, listen to my heart beat listen to my heart beat beating out the rhythm of my song and at the moment I'm singing yeah. it quite fast because my heart's going quite fast yeah. <laughs> uh, listen to my heart beat listen to my heart beat beating out the rhythm of my song and then it goes So it's 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 yeah. everywhere. Music's everywhere. Even if you are, even if you're quiet, even if you're silent, there is still music happening. Music happens in those quiet places. And music wouldn't be music if it didn't have the pauses, if it didn't have the syncopation, if it didn't have um, the tension and release. Uh, so there's all sorts of things going on. The waves in the ocean. You know, you hear that pulsing sound. That's music. Uh, how do you use music? What is it? What your question was? I, I don't. That, that's a thesis in itself. Yeah. <laughs> well, this this whole profession is. I, I've spent a lot of time trying to do research, and you see, I've got a lot of uh, yeah, yeah, little yeah. bits of it here. Yeah. And, I thought, uh, <laughs> and that's why probably we won't be able to cover everything here. So uh, right. <clears throat> um, I, I think it's such a uh, music is such a therapy is such a unique way to connect with people and uh, how do you tailor well you've already talked a little bit about how you tailor the sessions to, to different uh, client needs and uh, I think that you probably covered most of that for, mm. yeah, yeah. It, it really is um, building that rapport finding finding um, finding a way to connect with someone um, mm. be it what music do you like like for instance, I haven't asked you today. What music do you like? You I kind of I, I kind of migrate to uh, Baroque and Renaissance, believe it or not. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and uh, I participate in the Nelson Civic Choir, and I'm in the I'm in the bass section because we don't have a baritone section on it. And uh, Jason Bala, who's who's doing our music directing, has really brought out a lot in our group. So. Uh, yeah. I get my I get my fix every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I could ask you. Yeah. You know, what is it about music for you? And and it's different for every person. Yeah. It's different for every person. And the, the and the taste and the style of music is different for every person. So if you want to connect with someone, you um, it, it's really it's been researched that you get more benefit if you are listening to music that you enjoy. Um, rather than listening to something that you don't enjoy, um, and uh, um, and that's human nature, and we're all different, and that's the beauty of going in and working with someone. You, I learn things all the time from from people. So, mm. well, I, my transformation came from uh, early on. I was into uh, folk music. 
Uh -huh. and into world music and uh, lived in Greenwich Village in New York. And then I moved into to San Francisco to Haight-Ashbury and into uh, you know, beyond rock and roll. Uh, now I've migrated back more towards classical, so I'm sure I'm not unique. No. Uh, everybody has that. And you've got a, a terrific background in, in music and jazz. Uh, my wife used to run a jazz club in New Orleans, so uh, oh, jazz really? is also part of our favorites. Uh, so. Oh. <laughs> And that probably, you wanted to show us some more of the... No, uh, I, am, I'm, um, I, I think everyone can, can yeah. see that I've, I've brought a selection. It's really just to give the visual and, um, and an overview of what I, what I do. I mean, like, there's groups where I just use the buckets. There's groups where I'll just use the boom workers. Some groups I'll just take everything and see on the day uh, how it unfolds. It's, it's very in the moment, it's very um, improv improvisation, which <laughs> is jazz. Yeah. Uh, and it's very uh, on your toes and looking at how people are connecting and what um, they're attracted to so that they are getting, they are getting that exploration, they are getting that confidence to go and have a look and engage um, in, in whatever it is that takes their fancy. So you, do you also use a banjo or is it mostly the, the uh, mainly guitar? The, mainly the guitar. Um, I do have a ukulele as well, but I often Can just... Can you give us another ditty on your guitar? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a very basic player, yeah. and one of the songs that... Um, <clears throat> that people like is something like yeah. recognize it yeah 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 for my folk era your love guess you know it's true yeah yeah and so it's just those sorts of things that um i'm working with people um uh, one of the groups i work with like summertime and i often find myself playing that so it's summertime and the living is easy Fish are jumping And the cotton is high Wow. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> yeah. So I, and then, you know, you've got your things. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of those. Well, yep. this is a good transition to the, the other part of your career is uh, you're in jazz and jazz performance. You know, uh, you've had quite a vibrant career and and a pop singer. How, how do you balance your roles as a mu music therapist and a performer? <laughs> yeah, good yeah. good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, they're all starting to merge. Yeah. Um, music studying music therapy has given me another a deeper level, another level, another perspective on how to view performance, so to speak. Um, I, I blend everything these days. Um, I like to see my audiences having fun, engaging, recognizing songs, um, recognizing rhythms. Um, so, it, you know, like what I'm trying to say, I suppose, is when I get up on stage, it's not about me. Uh, it's about the music. It's about the people in front of me. Um, I'm not looking for the glory or the adulation. Uh, it's just, I'm here. I'm music. I just want to share my gift. I just want to help one person in the audience. Just to look out and see the smiles yeah. or the yeah. Uh, yeah. expressions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just want to touch one person. If one person's going through something and there's a song or um, a sound or something I do within a song that touches them, yay. That's, um, I've done my job. That's one thing I, I, uh, I like about certain forms of music is that you can really get into it. Mm. And just get out and dance or yeah. you know, do what you're talking about with the scarves or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And at the mm. same time as well, um, mm. you know, there's the, the, the up, upbeat ones where, yeah. you know, you do get out and dance and sing along and have a great time. There's also acknowledging the quieter songs um, and, and just letting them be and letting them sit 
And honestly, when that happens, you can just feel the audience. It's an incredible feeling. Um, they're just hanging on every note, every space, every sound, and really with you. It's um, yeah, it's just it's almost it just brings a tear to your mm -hmm. eye. Yeah. I've been exploring a lot with voice lately, and there's a group called Voice Eight. I was listening last night before I went to bed, and I was just really in tears and, and all of that from from that music. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Yeah, I I find that if I if I listen to music before I go to bed, which is yeah, quite often, I'm in the office working out a ditty or a song or something for for some group I've got the next morning, um, and I find that I wake up at two or three in the morning and the song just goes. Boop, yeah, pops yeah. back in my head and I have to lie there going, okay, whoo, yeah. it, whoo, yeah. just put that to one side, just start counting and, and I just have to start counting and that's what puts me back <laughs> to sleep often. Yeah. I want to delve more into the, your music background too. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us more about your experience in co-writing and hosting uh, a radio jazz program, Jazz Footprints? I, I wasn't around during that time, but uh, how did that uh, a project come into your life? <laughs> right. Um, 2006, I found myself back in Wellington after um, I'd been living in Dunedin for a number of years. Um, and um, a, a chap by the name of Hayden Shirley used to do the jazz program on RNZ National, or National Radio as it was then. Um, and he passed away soon after I got back into town and during, just through conversation with one of my work colleagues um, I said well you know is there any chance I could step up and and put a jazz program together and so that's how it came about um, and another colleague and myself were, were put together and so we co-produced and I hosted it and um, there you go we did about mm, eight or nine seasons I think of it yeah, and after a while, we we started off um, doing international um, people and talking about international songs, you know, and playing that that style. And then at some stage, um, I said, "No, I want to interview New Zealand um, musicians, jazz musicians." So we started interviewing New Zealand jazz musicians. So they're probably on the Radio New Zealand RNZ site. If you looked up Jazz Footprints, you can have a wee listen and have a giggle. <laughs> I will do that. Uh, and, and you have a uh, trio called the Colette uh, Jansen Trio, and you perform jazz, blues, and uh, I don't know if it's the right the word, stylized pop songs, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, covering music from the 20s and, and today. Uh, yeah. How do you approach selecting songs for uh, such a broad repertoire? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time it's um, in collaboration with, with the other guys. So uh, I mainly work with um, Baz and Alan, and um, we'll, we'll brainstorm and say, okay, we've been asked to do this gig. What what songs do we put in? What do we need to add? Uh, for instance, recently we did an '80s um, gig at a at a home, and uh, we had to just basically write a good portion of um, the songs. We had to um, come up with them and you know go finding them. So you're always looking for songs that people can either sit and listen to, because it's really good to be able to have a quiet song to have a breath, um, and then songs that they'll we're pretty sure they'll dance to. Um, and it's the same through all the eras. So 1920s Gadsby, there was a big, um, in the middle of this year, we had a few gigs that had Gadsby themes. Um, and then there's 1950s and 60s, often those two get lumped together, or there's the 60s and 70s. So um, we, we just go looking for songs that fulfill that criteria of, okay, a medium few to start with, um, some uppy ones and then some quiet ones and then finish off with a bit of raucous dancing at the end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, jazz is an interesting medium because uh, during the 60s and 70s, I, I lived in New York for, and you could just go out and go into a club and had a jazz group going and mm -hmm. you could have a conversation with your uh, person yes. and still be listening to the jazz you know, and enjoying it. You know? Right. Yeah, right. I, I remember visiting um, Chicago um, back in the early 2000s and um, I um, found myself going to dinner in a 
roadside, do you call it a roadside cafe or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in Chicago, somewhere out the yeah. wherever. And um, uh, I got talking to the band during their break and I said, oh, I just, you know, released a CD, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And, um, um, and the guy said to me, oh, we'll come up and sing. So, yeah, there was that commonality where you immediately knew okay, do you know such and such a song? Yeah, I know that. And what key do you do it in? Oh, I think I do it in this key. And boof, away we went, you know. So there, there was a connection. Yeah. Again, it's that connection. So that was me seeing in motion, if you like, music therapy to bring people from different cultures together. Um, you've got the American culture and the New Zealand culture, like we have here in this yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. Um, and finding a commonality. And when you are gigging with someone, when you actually play in a band there's an immediate connection. You, you can, you've got to listen to your fellow um, band members to hear where they're at in the song, to hear what they might be doing, what little motif or riff or um, yeah. pattern they've, they've come up with and their creativity, and you go, oh, okay, I'll let them know I'm listening to them by, by doing something similar or reply, repeating what they've done. And, elongating that out and that's exactly what we do in music therapy yeah. so jazz for me has been a great foundation for what I'm doing now the improvisation the listening the the acknowledging the mirroring the the supporting the holding it's it's basically jazz well every time you do a piece it's unique Absolutely, on yeah. Its own. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're live, yeah. it's just like, okay, people. And I often say that, okay, you're never going to hear it done like that again. <laughs> yeah. uh, your background in commercial radio and public broadcasting is fascinating. Um, how did you experience uh, any? How did your experience in radio shape your musical career? You, you've you brought a little bit into it already. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, w w um, so before Hayden. Um, uh, when I was working in radio uh, <clears throat> a few years <laughs> earlier than that, <laughs> um, there was a guy by the name of Ross Harris who was doing a jazz program, and I was the sound engineer um, putting together, the, helping compile the program at one stage when he was in the studio and um, in the old broadcasting house in Wellington. And um, the songs he was playing, I just... I just absolutely loved because going back even further, my background is in music theatre here in Nelson. Mm -hmm. And so I was already listening to some of those old tunes, the old musical tunes. And what the, the jazz players did is they took a lot of those old musical tunes and they jazzed them up mm -hmm. and they put the different voicings and the different harmonies to them and gave them the, you know, a bit of a swing or a whatever rhythm. And um, so I already had that. Now, where was I? I'm losing myself. <laughs> um, how did that help me? So, so career, that was yeah. my introduction, introduction into jazz, um, working with um, the likes of Ross Harris and um, Keith. His name just escapes me, his surname. Um, so putting those programs together, I fell in love with people like Joy Yates. She's a New Zealand um, jazz singer and um, David McRae and then listening to people like Jackie Fitzgerald who I absolutely loved um, her voice just really intrigued me and and so that was my introduction into jazz I loved it um, I then left Wellington and went up to Hamilton and I got myself in a jazz band with some other TV and radio people um, and again that just solidified my my love of jazz How'd you, how'd you hook up with uh, Doug Caldwell, who was a, a legend? You know? um, so yeah. Doug was um, a tutor down at Christchurch when I found myself back down in Christchurch mm -hmm. doing the jazz school. Um, and he was there and I, he invited me to do some gigs and performances with him and some concerts. Um, and it was always in the back of my mind that I would love to record with him. And so, I, yeah, that, that came about through knowing him through the jazz school. Oh, yeah. wow. Unfortunately, he's passed away. So he, he has, uh, yes. And I went down to his um, memorial and his get-together um, after his after he passed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a great guy. Looking back at your diverse career, um, from radio to music therapy and performing, what advice would you give to aspiring musicians or therapists hoping to follow a similar multifaceted path? Now, that's... <laughs> 
that's a hard one to. <laughs> <laughs> my my path has evolved. Yeah. I um, I didn't go looking for it. It's it's just evolved. I've had doors close on me, um, and I know it's a cliche, but honestly, when they close, you do some reflection. And you go, okay, what next? And sometimes when you're not looking, that next door opens. And that's pretty much where I find myself now. Um, coming back to Nelson after many years away, I, I would never have thought I would be back here, but I am. And it's due to um, uh, the love of my life, who I met when I was 16, but we went our separate ways and now we've um, re-met. So, uh, and, and yeah, it's just like one door, one door closes, another door opens. So... Just follow your heart, I suppose, and follow, follow the opportunities that present themselves. You know, you, you can have a plan. You can have a plan and you can go, right, um, this is what I'm going to do. Boom, 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 boom. And then when that doesn't happen, it can be a huge disappointment. Um, so I'm not saying don't have plans, but at the same time, be ready for the university of life, which will kick you. It will give you left field. It will pull the rug out from underneath you and to have what some people call resilience and some people don't like that word, if to have grit, to have determination and say, okay, this hasn't happened this way, can it happen another way? Mm. Go with the flow. You'll end up where you'll end up. That was like the, the, the question I was going to ask, you know, is it, what is next for you? I mean, uh, you've talked about it just kind of flowing, but you probably have some plans. Uh, and um, and any new projects and things you might have in the horizon? There are some percolating, which I'll just let them keep on percolating <laughs> okay. for the moment. <laughs> well, I still want to pick but. your brains. <laughs> uh, 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 well, we would love, I, I've really enjoyed this interview with you. You're very, a very interesting person, and I think uh, people who will uh, tune into this podcast we'll get a lot out of it i hope so uh, thank you there are different aspects that I, we didn't get to get in today but i would love to have you back and we can delve into uh, some of them a little more a little a little more thoroughly i'd love to that'd yeah. be great todd yeah absolutely well thank you <laughs> you're welcome and and as we do in music therapy we say a little goodbye song okay and one of the goodbye songs that i'm using at the moment is um this one here. It's been used in churches, it's been used in rallies, um, but I use it like this. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm Goodbye to Todd. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me along. Goodbye to Todd. Thanks for inviting me along. Goodbye to Todd. Thanks for inviting me along. You've let me shine. You've let me shine. And you have shined. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. You're okay.